because there is a fountain and tea is the wine people because they couldn't make fire and they wanted to go and gather coal from the fresh lava. So Maui took the biggest ones behind them and he squeezed and let go. Let go. Squeeze again and let go. Finally the bird gave up. And the bird gave Maui the, the house tree. He was told to strip the bark and he took it rub. And immediately the Tamika made fire. So he took the fire stick guys and placed it on the head of the bird. And they say to this day, the Ala'e, they have a red beak. Signifying the secret of fire being cast into this office for the Maui. And as a young boy, I wanted to make sure that these stories were true. So I asked this man to teach me. His last name was Moli Kao. He taught me how to make fire. <laughs> it took me four and a half, five hours, you guys, but I did it. And now, as my ancestors before me, I can cook my food and I can keep myself warm at night and I can cook my food. I don't gotta wait for the volcano to go. <laughs> but everybody go, everybody pretty much knows the story of Maui. As you scale the tallest volcano of this island, we call it Hale Akala. So Hale is the house of Maui, the sun. Hale Akala. The east Maui mountain where the sun rises. Some morning when I'm telling outside my big farm, you look at the mountain and look at the sun actually coming out of his house. You see that the demigod Maui also broke for Kapu of the law forbidding humans, at least part humans, from entering the peak of the mountain to what we call the Vau Akua, the place of the Akua, the place of the gods, the place where all life existed was a man's non-existent. And as a Kabao of Kua, Kale Akua, then we got a last of the sun, using the last one made out of the long silver hair of his grandmother. And with the mana, the energy that pulled the sun down to the earth, she took her coat in her ads and it began to break the rays of sunshine one by one, making the sun promising to slowly crawl across the sky. So women like his mother, Hina, the goddess of Motan, who's like a couple of blocks. Men like his father, Akulana, the chief of Motan, who's like a couple of blocks. See, guys, I'll go on and on about the Maui, because like I said, he was our hero, he was our Superman, our Hercules. And I am a descendant of Maui. But not only are the bones of Maui buried all in the Aina, in the land, but the bones of all my kupuna, my ancestors buried all in this land. So as a native, you guys, I choose not to walk alone. I choose to walk with my ancestors. They're my companions. And they stand with me right now. Because I can feel them on my back. My great-great-grandfather, he wanted to not to go to his kapu to say either. But this is the thing, my papa, he doesn't smile, or even frown, depending on how I behave. The things that I say, I need to smile. I always start the same one by giving my mahalo to my elder people kill. As a child, you know, always a little to me. Speak Hawaiian, so I learn my language. Tell me stories of our myths and, and legends to memorize. By the time I was pretty much 14 years old, he asked me, local boy, you know how to hunt, you know how to die, you know how to fish, you know how to farm carol, you know how to surf. In my 20s, I was fortunate that my uncle, my elder, Kimo he taught me how to make canoes. And by, by my 30s, we took the canoes across the ocean. You see guys, I really began to realize my elder, he really wanted to make sure, just in case Costco goes tomorrow, I'd be okay. <laughs> but he taught me how to be what you call sustainable. I call it a way of life, how we live in harmony with the land and sea, we've been living for thousands of years. The first thing we were taught, as I showed you, we taught to say mahalo ke akua, we give thanks to ke akua to God today. Mahalo na amakua, we thank your guardian angel. Mahalo na kupuna, we thank our elders and we respect our elders. Those that take care the land and sea before us, they give us the good mana. And thank all you guys for being here tonight. Um, about five and a half years ago, you guys, my friend uh, Mick Fleetwood and his partner JT and Carl, they wanted to open up a restaurant in the Hainan. I was just fortunate that we asked people to come and do the blessing. I never met this guy before, but when I came, surrounded by plenty media people, TVs and videos and cameras, and I can't even tell the guys, it's served. Before and after the ceremony, as much pictures as you like, as much uh, interviews you like. But during the ceremony, I like no pictures, no videos. The guy kind of would you when you back up. He looked at me and said, Yeah, Huna We keep secret what is sacred. We keep sacred what is secret. And he got it. <laughs> For 45 minutes, we just leave him and his partner. We go bless the building from the roof, all down to the bottom, to the basement. You see, guys, this is the old Lahaina store. This is a historical building, right? Over 100 years old. It's all the making of the prisons and everything. <laughs> so, I wouldn't be surprised if there's spirits that, that roam these halls at night. 
Yeah. So the owner never like before he passed away last year, he never like so not a rest spot in his place. So Mick had to convince that. Why is he gonna be different? And I realized why. Because he wanted to bring the culture together. Yeah, Pili, the two cultures. For Oko, I told him how he showed up. But sometimes showing up is not good enough for us. So I need you to commit to me right now, okay? Before we do this lesson. I need you to see you with me from blue to one, like one big family. And then from there we have two other. You know, we take our ego, we leave them outside the door. We empty our cup. Because we fill our cup with all the positive thoughts, positive words. Five years later, we still here. So I'm a hollow family to bring that up. I was asked to do this ceremony, you guys. I really told Nick I didn't want to do this. Because I told him I didn't want to come up here and entertain people. Because I'm not here to entertain anybody. I'm here to be real. Um, my name is Ben Ed, And I am um, represent a little land called Pohono Ulu on the south side of Maui. The Amukwa'a. Maukwa, I have all my, my food, my medicine, my fresh water. Building material. All the necessary elements to sustain me and my family. Uh, my moku, my, my aupua is in a larger moku or just for kula from the mountain to the sea, or to the horizon. Yeah. Um, and my moku, my district is in a larger moku puni for an island called Maui Nui, Maui the Great. And I am a, a fish farmer. I farm fish. They call me Okumu only because I teach the kids in Maui private public and charter schools. And I teach them what they don't teach them in school. Uh, how to farm, the fish and food, how to make their own medicine, how to build a canoe, navigate the canoe, so they can sustain themselves. Exactly the way my ancestors have. And if you put it in perspective, I got to follow the path of my Kapuna. Now they came on double haul, double sailing canoes 2,500 years ago. They master navigated an estimated 64 million square miles one third the surface of the planet, 20 times the size of the United States. It came on these double hot, double cities, and there's nothing with any compass and GPS. Yes. The same thing like it took us to send a man to the moon, the same mental it took my ancient, my ancestors reaching the islands. Profound, you guys. At the birth of Christ, thousands and thousands of miles away, here in these islands, the culture arrived with their people, their plants, their animals, and their gods. By 1778, when Captain James Cook arrived in these islands, they estimated a human population of one million in these islands. They were one million strong. After 2,000 years of isolation from the world, no running water, no electricity, no plumbing, completely self-sustainable. Today, in the Hawaiian Islands, you guys, we have 1.2 million people in the same amount. But today, we import 90% of our food. We 90% depend on our fossil fuels. We have children that are homeless. You know, my ancestors, 0%. Every child, every baby has food, water, shelter. Huge part of their success was the fish farms. The fish farms were things that unified the land, and the land with many fish farms was considered the Ainamo Mona, the fat of the land, Samuel from Akali in 1869. So my elders, my Kupuna, is telling me, Venet, for all the way to Peal, listen to us. It's your ears. Venet, Nana, for Maka, look to us as a source. Venet, for Opili, do exactly as we have done. Help you us. Venet, Pa'a Kawaha. Keep your mouth closed. You can listen. Olohe, Nana, observe. Hopefully, copy. Pakwa, be quiet. You don't gotta be now. Ask questions. All the answers are right there. So this is the this is the eye opener for me. Imagine yourself on a canoe deck. A double hole, double canoe deck on the bar. The end of this ride to this walk. With 10 to 15 people in a canoe for 28 days. No land in sight, no place to go, and no compass. I can guarantee you guys not everybody's gonna have a very good day out there. <laughs> so the biggest lesson we learn as, as ocean people, we learn aloha, we learn love, how to love people. It's not easy, but it's always the best thing to do in the canoe. Second lesson, malama aina, please take care of your land. Don't be guys wrong. You see, your land and your body is one. If you're poisoning your land, you're poisoning your body. When you're sick, the medicine man can ask you where you live. And they can go to your land to find you medicine. Yeah. Same land that's born you, same land that heals you. The land in your body is born you. Take care of the land, the land take care of us. Provide the tree for the, for the canoe, the food and the water for the boys. So this is our message. Moku. Moku 
The canoe is our island, and the island is our canoe. So we get ready to sail to Tahiti. We got all the 800 nautical miles that way. That canoe becomes our island. Food, water, shelter. And when we come back from our voyage, we arrive to the beautiful, beautiful Hawaiian Islands, guess what? We're still sitting in a canoe. There is no other landmass 2,000 miles any direction from these islands. Hawaiian Islands right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So what my, my cultural group is trying to say is, Bene, how are you guys doing? Take care of all these gifts we grant you guys. Death and the birth of this in this fragile environment. But, but more important, importantly, Bene, oh, how do you guys treat one another? And I realize, you guys, the answer is only with Aloha. We love. It's the most powerful force in the universe. And so what I teach all my students, I teach them no matter where they come from, what nationality, what they speak, what language, I tell them, we teach our children in here in the islands that the planet Earth, this globe, is really the canoe for human beings. And we can all realize you guys, we are all connected. Love, care, share, protect, respect. It's a state of mind. We can make this a better place. But it's not for us. It's for our kids. And someday their kids. Their kids, kids, kids. Our kids, 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 great grandkids. Because everything we do today impact the next seven generations. Everything we do today. So you guys look at me in a canoe on the pond, working the taro and the lo'i. You guys just see that I am a descendant of my ancestors. Therefore, I am an ancestor of my descendants. You see, I don't know what those kids 200 years from now are going to say about us. What kind of ancestors are we going to be? Keola, 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 keola. Love to live, live to love. And this has been our aloha to the world. Since Cook arrived in shores, 1770, we tell the people the world like this. Come on, my, come on, my. Aloha, my, everybody, come. Come to our island. If you guys are hungry, Bene and us and the kids, they get fish for you guys. Here, my fish, our fish is free. You guys thirsty in it? The students, we climb the coconut trees. We bring all you guys the sweetest water. If you guys need a place to rest, we can build you the hale, the bed out of the coconut trees. Ekomomai, ekomomai, ekomomai. For all that we have is now all yours. Take care of this place. With my ancestors have so we can have it to the next generation. And that's the message I wanted to bring to you guys tonight. The message of uh of Aloha, 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 Aloha. out these islands with his magic hook. There would have been more, but somebody looked. He put him on the sky, the sun he in the white. Slowed all its flight so copper could dry, yeah. Mr. Bis, marvelous, magical Maui, hero of this land. The one, the only, the ultimate Hawaiian Superman. Mahahoe, oh Mahahoe. Oh my holy Hawaiian Superman Secret of fire was locked yeah. somewhere in time So when the eye he died in the holly can take the way to the ignite So off he goes in search of those holding information Fire could be used by all our future generations He found out a lot of the fire connection but it's kind of deception, pressure from perfection. With no other choice, he had to get me. And squeeze a light stroke until she screamed that secret. 
Twister this marvelous magical Maui, hero of this land. The one, the only, the ultimate Kanaka Superman. Mahahoe, oh Mahahoe, oh Mahahoe, Hawaiian Superman. Go. Everybody have a positive night. Enjoy Maui, enjoy Pigwood, and aloha. Aloha.